fantasy Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Hey guys, Underground Geek here. So today is another one of our weekly Comic Skate News with Underground Geek, your host. And uh, I've got a lot of things to talk about. I'm hoping that these websites don't start flipping out with ads so they don't mess me up. But uh, maybe it will um, maybe we'll let you guys know a little bit about what's going on. Now the reason I do these videos, like I tell every week, is... I like to consolidate all the news that has happened in the comic skate world so that you are in the know and you can watch one video and you don't have to watch several videos and you can just get caught up on everything. Now, some people uh, will make like five different videos on the same subject, you know who I'm talking about, but I like to do one because, like I said, it consolidates it. Now, I may end up losing, you know, not getting as many views, but it's more important to me to let you guys know what's going on than it is. To get several views because I'm still going to get the views. I just may not get five videos out of it, so it's okay with me. I don't have that kind of time. But so we're going to start talking about different subjects, and we're going to start with the uh, announcement of Marvel's Exiles and uh, this really controversial news that's going on right now. Uh, so Exiles is a random team of uh, superheroes, and uh, this one includes Valkyrie. But instead of being the normal Valkyrie, it's the Valkyrie version that they had in Thor Ragnarok, the movie. And uh, that's not really a big deal because it is a random character from a random universe. The problem is the politics that the uh, writer Saladin Ahmed is trying to bring into it. Uh, he, you know, it's not enough to be a female character. You also have to be a minority and you also have to be bisexual. You can't be uh, anything else. And so, they, like it says in this article here, they reinterpreted her as a strong black queer tankard. And uh, it's just really funny, you know. And I think there's, like Ahmed stated right here, he says, The Exiles versions of Valkyrie is a bit, a bit different from what we've seen in comics thus far. A Valky Valkyrie is known as the lone defender of Asgard, not really. And she's a tanker-draining, maiden-wooing, uh, giant-slaying thunderbolt of a woman. Okay, so she's exactly like the other one. Uh, though she's not technically from the Marvel Cinematic Universe reality, she's basically the literalization of the larger-than-her-physical-frame swagger that Tessa Thompson displayed in Thor Ragnarok turned up to 11. Yeah, because Tessa was hot. Now you've turned her into this weird, jacked-up, man-looking creature. I'm going to see if I can find a picture. Yeah, right here. Here you go. So this is their design for uh, Valkyrie. Yep, that's it right there. Look at those shoulders. I just got done uh, this past week uh, watching the Alabama championship game, and she looks just like some of our linebackers that we had. She looks like, uh, I think his name is uh, Fitzpatrick, Mateo Fitzpatrick or something like that. Yeah, she looks like him. So it's very sad, very sad. And so you look at some of these reactions. Uh, Visa Complex says, Thank you, this means so much to the POC nerd community. Yeah, because that's what you need is uh, someone representing the POC nerd community. Yeah, that's the more, most important thing about a character. Mystery member of the New Exiles revealed Valkyrie with a very big tip of the hat to Tess Thompson. Oh yeah, because you made her queer. You know, you, you made her ugly and queer. Uh, Tess Thompson's tanker draining Maiden Wu and Valkyrie is going to star in a Marvel comic book. Yay! Mary Sue, of course. And uh, so, yeah, that's, like I said, that's the most important thing about a character is to make her uh, a minority and to make her queer. And you can, you know, they had to go get these pictures here from where uh, Valkyrie kissed other women because, you know, you have to have that. My thing is, the, my favorite uh, relationship is when she was dating uh, Agent Venom. And she like sidekick beside him to go kick butt. That was that was the best part to me. And instead, now she's this weird linebacker-looking character. Which one would you rather have? This one or that one? Hmm. Hmm. Moving on. So the next story we're going to talk about is uh, DC tops Marvel December 2017 comic book sales. And they go into this long, drawn-out article about why stuff is better than other stuff. 
but we're going to go down here and just talk about the summarizations. You have the top publishers, you have DC at 34%, Marvel at 33%, and then you have unit market share 38%. Uh, you have comparable sales statistics here, and then you also have, uh, let's go down to new title shipped. So Marvel actually had more titles shipped, but DC sold more, and they even sell their books for cheaper. They sell them for like a dollar less. And then you got the top 10 comics here. This is the most important part. This is really what I want to talk about. Uh, the top 10 uh, comic books here are going to be Doomsday Clock 2. Dark Knight's Metal 4, Phoenix Resurrection, Batman, Batman, Batman White Knight, Amazing Spider-Man Venom, Alpha 1, that's a number one, Marvel 2-in-1, number one, Hawkman Found, number one, Amazing Spider-Man 792. Amazing Spider-Man 792 was, uh, I think, also a Venom tie-in. So, out of ten titles, you've got one, two, three, four Marvel. Hmm. Hmm. So then we go to uh, top 10 graphic novels, and Saga number 8 gets uh, the top there. And then you got Batman Volume 4, The War of Jokes and Riddles. That's probably my least favorite arc. I'm kind of surprised that sold so well. Um, Batman Detective Comics, Star Wars, Black Hammer, Justice League, Suicide Squad, Shirtless Bear Fighter comes in at number 7. Uh, Deadly Class, Venomverse, and Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is number 10. Wow. Top 10 books. Uh, Terry Moore, Anniversary Sketch, uh, Overwatch, things like that. So yeah, it's pretty funny how that they were able to top Marvel. So, I'm very happy to see it because uh, Marvel needs to have their... Uh, someone kick, kick them in the pants, wake them up a little bit, and uh, get them back on track because uh, I'm just, you know, I'm done with the uh, social uh, politics over at uh, Marvel, and I'm ready for them to start making good books again. Tom King is a very big SJW, and he's kicking tail at, at uh, DC, so they need to wake up. Okay, so the next story I want to talk about is John Wick is actually getting a TV show. They don't know that much about it yet, but it says Stars announced Friday that they're going to have a TV show. Uh, it, it's called The Continental, and uh, it's a series based on a John Wick film. Um, they, he, you know, Keanu Reeves is going to be executive producer. Now, I didn't read. I don't know if he's going to be in the show, but he is executive producer. Um, and the writer, writer, and another producer is Chris Collins, who is uh, he's done Sons of Anarchy, The Wire, and The Man in the High Castle. So those are all good stories. So I'm very excited to see what he's going to do with this. Um, the Continental kind of reminds me of the book that they have right now, John Wick, that's going on right now, because John Wick, the comic book, is dealing with before he was really John Wick. He gets introduced to the Continental, gets adapted into that family. And then you kind of see what's going to go down. All right. So, very excited about that. We'll see how that goes. Moving on, Suicide Squad Hell to Pay is a new movie coming out. Uh, I'm very excited about this because the last one was really good. I loved when you had that love triangle between uh, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, and Joker. Joker was angry. This wasn't going down. Joker was coming at him with a vengeance. So I'm very excited to see what's going on. And let's see if we can find out a little bit more about it. It says, uh, Warner Brothers Home Entertainment comes a surprise animated feature centering on DC Comics' most nefarious foes. Um, the title team, also known as Task Force X, will assemble under Amanda Waller in order to risk their lives once again and retrieve a mysterious and powerful object. This time they're going up against other villains outside the squad. Oh god, they did the spell squad, S-K-W-A-D, who want the MacGuffin for themselves and will do anything to get their hands on it. Hmm, okay. Kind of ruined it when you put squad. So we got Christian Slater as Deadshot. 
love him in voiceovers. Billy Brown as Bronze Tiger, uh, Liam McKinter as Captain Boomerang, uh, Kristen Bauer Van Stratton as Killer Frost, Gideon Emery as Copperhead, Tar Strong as Harry Quinn, Vanessa Williams as Amanda Waller, that sounds familiar, C. Thomas Howe as Zoom, so they're going to have Zoom in it, uh, Deanna Ramirez as uh, Scandal Savage, James Ubenborg as Professor Pig, and on and on and on. So, I think that's going to be really good. The first one was awesome. Alright, so another movie that's getting made is X-Men Kitty Pride. It's going to be by 20th Century Fox, which is now pretty much uh, Marvel at this point. I don't know that they completely bought them just yet. It says, uh, you know, I'm kind of really sketchy about this movie. I'm really worried about this movie. Alright. It says, uh, whatever may or may not happen when the Disney-Fox deal concludes its long uh, regulatory review process appears to matter little to the development side of 20th Century Fox, which seems to be proceeding with business as usual, including the development of yet another X-Men spinoff, the one starring Kitty Pride, a.k.a. Shadowcat. I don't know why they just don't call her Shadowcat. That's a cooler name. Uh, further in news that in, should intrigue fans, a project which uh, would still be in its early stages has Deadpool's Tim Miller attached to it as a potential director. Okay. It says, indeed, uh, the news comes via Collider, which reports that Miller has been developing a Kitty Pride movie at Fox for some time as producer and is leaving the door open to also direct the film. This might come as a surprise to fans who are already anticipating what X-Men and Disney and Marvel Studios... Uh, could be could look like however fox has a number of x films in various stages of production they also have x-men sequel they have x-men dark phoenix they have uh and two spin-offs they have deadpool 2 and they have new mutants oh my god i didn't know there was all those movies so yeah so we're gonna see where that goes uh it's very early development so i don't know exactly what's going on with it just yet but yeah a little bit of a uh, tidbit of information for you there so moving on, we're going to talk about Vox Day and his Alt Hero comic book. Now, uh, this is an article by Megan Fox. Basically, Alt Hero is a slap in the face at all the SJWs uh, and what they're doing right now. And uh, it, the, to be honest, I could care less about the book. I could care less about the book because I'm a Southerner, and when I look at this, it looks like a joke to me. Uh, I would never read a book where the hero has a rebel flag as a uniform. That just looks silly to me. And so, basically, Vox Day has not been very good as it, when it comes to uh, people uh, criticizing his work. And he's been very SJW-like because all of a sudden there was this flip where uh, you had Diversion in Comics and you had Ethan Van Skyver very lightly criticizing uh the book and he flipped out flipped out box day flipped out on them uh this turned into an argument on twitter and uh ethan van Skyver was basically like you know i'm not criticizing you know we're friends and everything so he's actually set up a interview with box day that he's going to be having very soon on his channel comics pro secrets uh so we'll see how that goes now like i said i'm not interested as, at all in this book um so you know that's just me but it says he says being a, a good southern girl rebel made her own costume and the straps are supposed to be tied however considering how often they seem to come undone she is giving some serious thought to having to someone design her more practical outfit the stars and bars are unmistakably weak to the SJWs who got triggered to the very thought of a confederate flag so obviously you know that's what he's going for uh, we'll see where that goes but like I said I'm not interested at all and last but not least, we're going to talk about uh, Stan Lee and the allegations of sexual misconduct between him and uh, some nurses that take care of him. And then at the same time, we have uh, we have all these other people coming out. These comic book creators' wives are coming out saying that he groped them here and there. Of course, Bleeding Cool jumped on it. And what was really sad is one of the writers for Bleeding Cool, uh, Jude Terror, actually went online and started condemning... Um, Stan Lee over these actions without even having any evidence. So you've got a quote unquote journalist tweeting online on his account condemning someone who hasn't even had any charges brought against them yet. Still don't have any charges brought against them. 
and you know, there's a lawsuit pending but that's about it and it's very sad because these nurses were put in charge of this old man he's 95 years old and then now they're coming out they're pretty much uh they're violating regulations by doing this anyway and uh saying that he he told them uh to give him oral sex and all these different things and then we've got um let's see who else came out and said we we had another woman come out and say that uh he had pulled her onto his lap and tried to kiss her and then it turned into he was trying to put his tongue down her throat uh, and this is just them i mean there's no no proof no pictures no nothing and then we're we're supposed to just you know it's sad it's like the allegation is the proof you know that it, it's like you're guilty until proven guilty the, and what's sad is this man is 95 years old now and this would probably end up killing him because you've got these nurses coming out saying he said these things and now you've got all these other people jumping on the bandwagon you've got bleeding cool come out here and making these articles let's just read a little bit of this article this week mail online uh, ran two executive stories dealing with allegations of sexual harassment by the 95 year old marvel universe co-creator stan lee against a number of nurses attending his home from a nursing care company and a hotel massage therapist. These allegations were described by his lawyers as a shakedown. After each of these reports, there have been also been many people who came out to the state that Lee had always behaved like a gentleman towards women and men alike, even in airs of a madman style casual sexist and racist office culture. One example of him using blue language when approving the Carol, the Carol Danvers Miss Marvel costume had been referred to but precious little else bleeding cool also uh looked at further details of these claims from alan duke producer on uh, crime stories with nancy grace who also who had been closely involved with these allegations and they talk a little bit about it uh says uh oh man i believe this because the last time i saw stan he gave my, i mean you really gonna believe this? he starts out with oh man oh man i believe this uh because last time i saw stan he gave my wife a little grope and extended kiss well, what did he grope tell me i thought it was funny at first because his he was stan lee and he was 94 at the time and while strange i thought it was harmless my wife even cracked up but reading this story makes it a lot less funny yeah because now you're thinking about it you, you know it was no big deal until other people were talking about it and you're like oh look i get to talk about it true story at the time think about it it was funny little old man comet legend he pulled me on his lap and full-on kisses me i laughed it off but yeah that totally happened to me too so you laughed it off so you didn't think it was a big deal get over it you can't it kills me how it's not a problem until you get virtue signals over it if it wasn't a problem it wasn't a problem if it was a problem you just slapped him if it was a problem you would pushed him off of you i mean I do feel bad that he's going around doing that stuff because he shouldn't be doing that. But at the same time, I don't know. It's just, it's really funny. And it's really telling that this was not a, uh, it was not a big deal until all these other people came out. And so I hope this gets cleared up. I, I hope it's not true. And I hope it gets cleared up. If it is true, it's sad because he's an old, he's an old, feeble old man. It's probably got a lot of uh, mental issues at this point doesn't know what's going on i mean at this point he's like 95 96 years old so anyway we'll see where that goes that's all i got guys i hope this uh helped you uh catch up on what's going on there's some other things that had happened but as far as it goes this is all i know right now uh hit the like button hit the subscribe button that's all the news i got for today i got some more videos coming out but uh yeah thanks guys i hope you all uh, like the video underground geek out